to look out here. I can't believe we were here. For many of you know, this is a long journey. September 2021 was meant to be this conference. And just when we got there and it looked like out of COVID, we might be able to have an event, Americans couldn't travel. So it's like, okay, well, a whole year, September 2022, that will be fine. We got to within three days and Her Majesty the Queen died. So all of the things, the beautiful events that we'd had during the week in Parliament, all utterly cancelled. Bishop Brown was in Rome and so kind of had to turn back to go back to the States. So I really didn't believe today would happen. It's, it's so surreal and I'm just so grateful to God. God's providence, in a strange twist of fate, it was the death of Queen Elizabeth II that has brought us here to her centre, named in her honour. What are the strangers? <laughs> to Her Majesty the Queen. And I think we are in a very, very prestigious conference centre because we're bang opposite Westminster Abbey where the first rededication of England happened by King Richard II and we've now got Our Lady of Walsingham here present again. We're also opposite Westminster Abbey where the coronation will take place later in May and we're bang opposite our Parliament which as you all know is in need of a massive amount of prayer. Well, here's what's been in my heart really all this week. Because I realize every time I come to, to the UK, I realize how alive the 16th century is in the minds of Catholics. How important that moment was, drawing courage from these people. What if, think of Edmund Campion, or Ralph Sherwin, or Oliver Plunkett, as they were facing their execution, if the Lord had given them this vision? If they could have said, you know, in the year 2023, in the shadow of Westminster Abbey, there'd be 1,500 enthusiastic Catholics gathered to celebrate their faith publicly. Well, I mean, we've drawn strength, haven't we, from their courage and their witness. That's very much in my heart as I, as I commence reflecting with you today. It was tremendous, uh, about 1,300 people, the biggest crowd, they think, since COVID, certainly. One of the biggest gatherings of Catholics in London. I loved it. I get, you know, you tell when you're a speaker, as I am, I have a lot of experience, you can tell when an audience is kind of with you or audience is engaged. This one was from the beginning. And then we had a conversation uh, with uh, myself and Tom Holland, the historian, which I really enjoyed. I've been following him for a long time. Never met him before yesterday. But I love that conversation. And that, to me, is what evangelization has to do. You know, we have to keep moving out into the culture. I think today has been remarkable for a number of reasons. First of all, this has been organised entirely by lay people, supported by you know the clergy, but entirely by the lay. And it just shows you, you know, the importance of lay people taking an initiative. Now it's been a brave one, a courageous one on behalf of those who. But nevertheless, look at the response. I don't know about you, Father Pascal, but I can sense this hopeful anticipation for what this conference might mean for the faith here in the UK. I think we are raring to bring the gospel to every corner of this country and I know many of you will have been travelling from those various different corners so thank you so much for being here. We're going to have so much fun together. As we think about sharing the church's story, do not forget our history. Do not forget on whose shoulders we stand. And do not, as it were, think that this is something of this moment only. I think today we ought to be very mindful of those who have lived the Catholic faith, served the Catholic faith, as faithful laity, as sisters, as priests, in our parishes up and down this country. And as we thank God for them today, so we draw strength from them for our role in handing on this great story, the story of the church, of the word of God alive, and of our mission in our world. Be coming here and seeing 1,300 Catholics from across all of London and the UK, and just, just seeing the numbers here, and so many people are here to learn more about the faith and understand the, the church's position in today's society. So I think that's just encouraging, just seeing everybody here together, wanting to be a part of the future. I actually was from London, but I study in Bristol, um, so I'm part of the CAFSOC there. Um, and 
um, came along as part of the Catholic Student Network um, in the UK. Um, and so, yeah, obviously heard about it, thought, well, that's, that sounds great, bunch of Catholics. The most amazing thing is that there's this many Catholics willing to get into a big room and have an event. Uh, it wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. Uh, and quite a broad group of people as well. So it's, good, it's a good sign. When they say the labour is a few, but not that few. Uh, you know, we're still out there, we're still in the fight. You have a duty to get involved. We can't just sit back and say, we're in a post liberal moment, new dogmas are being imposed, and, and I'm going to tap out here. The Catechism says, every single one of us as a Catholic has a duty to be involved in political life in the broadest sense. You're a house mum of nine children, of course you're not caught to parliament, right? It doesn't mean that. You're doing your political thing in that sense. But it does, it is incumbent on each of us to reflect and say, what am I being called to do as part of that political solution, that cultural solution? Aid to the Church in Need looks after the suffering and persecuted church around the world. We, we work with all of our benefactors to offer what support we can. Um, we're here today to explain to people a bit more about what we do, to introduce them to our resources for schools and parishes, um, to make available to them our most recent report um, called Persecuted and Forgotten about the places in the world where it's most difficult to be Christian today. And we're also hoping that people will sign our petition. I'm Alethea Williams and I'm here with the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, SPUC. Uh, we're really excited to be here meeting so many people and telling them about the work we do to try and save them more babies. We've been sharing with them about our prayer campaign as well, which works really well for, the, for this kind of setting. So, yeah, good reaction. I'm uh, Pierre Finaldi from Catholic Truth Society and uh, we're one of the sponsors of this event and we were just super happy to be able to do something, you know, a, one of these events where we get lots of people together, you know, after the last couple of years it's been, it's, these have been kind of greatly missed uh, and to have Bishop Barron here is great and uh, I mean in a sense for us our, our mission has always been to kind of uh, speak the, the Catholic truth uh, in a beautiful way and we, we felt very happy to sponsor this because that's exactly what kind of Bishop Barron's been doing for years. And I think when religion is proposed in an intelligent, beautiful way, in a confident way, people respond to it. We became very apologetic. By we, I mean the, the Christians. We became, oh, I'm sorry, and you know, I'll present my religion in a very um, superficial or domest domesticated way. I think when we do it boldly and confidently, the way Augustine did. Mm. You know, Augustine said, no, no, I, it, we shouldn't worship the Roman gods. I've got the true God for you, whose name is love, who's revealed in the cross of this first century rabbi. The, it, to use Tom's language, the weirdness of Christianity, I think, is very attractive to people, you know. But it's a weirdness from which a rightly ordered society comes. Do, do you feel like your rapprochement with Christianity yourself, Tom, is that just a, an eccentric thing that, of your own? Or do you see that as a something that might be suggesting there's something going on in our culture that people aren't content any longer with with the secular story well there's i mean there's it, it, it's on two levels um i mean the argument i mean it, maybe it's eccentric but i think it, it, it is it is true uh, it seems to me patently true that we live in a, a still a society that is utterly utterly saturated with christian assumptions and that it has ceased to be christian for utterly christian reasons i mean that's the paradox of it <laughs> I think we've just had arguably one of the finest interactions uh, with Tom Holland, who is the most remarkable man in terms of his understanding of Christianity. Um, and so he's given us the sense of where we've come from and the impact that that has and continue to have. And I think he's when some he was asked, you know, what does the church do? Essentially, he's saying do what the church does specifically. Don't try and replicate what everybody else is doing. There is a unique message of Christianity. And if we stick to that, and if we don't sort of say, well, we'll see what the world says about it, the world very often won't like what we have to say. I didn't realize how much we needed that sense of Catholic evangelism evangelizing like the reason I love Bishop Barron and Mag, Mag, Mags and I really bonded was just how much he speaks to our faith in a place where speaking to be Catholic and actually to own being Catholic is so well 
I don't want to say denigrated, but there is definitely a careful, you're careful when you say it, and actually it gives me a lot more courage to own it and to actually say it is the good news, but in a way that isn't putting it in people's faces. There's actually, there can be a gentle way to do it, and it's just thinking about how the Holy Spirit brings you forward. I can see this, this, this need to, to bring the gospel to the culture here and it's an enormous challenge but there's a lot of hope I mean when you see things like Catholic Voices and Bishop Barron this is enormously inspiring I, I think it takes away the sort of sense of isolation of what you might be doing in the Catholic Church and, I, and I'm sure this is one of the main points of bringing everybody together here we are the Catholic Mothers Apostolate. Um, we uh, are basically our mission and our apostolate um, is, um, was born to support mothers in their vocations and the domestic church. So what we do um, as an apostolate, we provide um, workshops you know, for the personal and spiritual de development of mothers. We produce uh, resources and import resources. Um, so there's some stuff, you, know, you can see there's some stuff that comes from America. There's our Catholic Mothers Planner, which is the one that we publish. So we even publish some of the resources ourselves and create some of the kind of products ourselves. So we have a little kind of mass bag. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you can see, so there's a broad um, kind of a variety of uh, um, products for, you know, to make, you know, faith fun because it is fun and it's, and it's beautiful as well. Do you think our media give due attention to the subject of persecution, uh, of particularly of Christians, and do you, do you see it getting worse or do you think it's getting better? What, what would you suggest? Yeah, I think there is an embarrassment about this. Uh, it has to be said in the mainstream media. You can get something in edge ways, as you say, I, I do sometimes. I mean, uh, Boxing Day was asked by the Telegraph, you know, would you like to write something on the persecution of Christians? But that's probably because it was Boxing Day, you know, and uh, the politicians were all on holiday. One thing I am sure of, that the more the enemy rages against us, so much more will our saints and martyrs in heaven pray for us. The more fearful are our trials within the world, the more present to us will be our Blessed Lady. We shall not be left orphans. We shall have within us the strength of the Holy Spirit, promised to the church and to every member of it. One thing alone I know, that according to our need, so shall be our strength. Our need is great. Our strength is greater.